Good morning, church family. Good morning. As we draw our mind and hearts in for worship, we're going to ask if you would stand to your feet. Here I am. 
worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. One more time, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am, Lord, to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. One more time, here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to the 31st chapter verse 10 it reads a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value she brings him good not harm all the days of her life she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands she is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still night and provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets out her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. She sees that the trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them is clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchant with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over her affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many, no, many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gates. Let us bow. I'll read to you Proverbs uh, 31, verses 10 through 31. Dear Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, on this Lord's day just to give you praise, to acknowledge you as Savior, Redeemer, our hope, our everything. Father God, we come today dressed in our fine pastel and our suits. But we come to give you praise, Father God, pushing past the beauty of it all to make you an audience of one. Because you alone are worthy. It is you that who have made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of your pasture. And your sheep hears your voice. And they know you by name. So we come, Lord, as sheep before a worthy shepherd. 
for you are our shepherd. We shall not want. You make us to lie down in green pastures and lead us beside the still waters. You restore our soul. For that we say thank you on today, Lord God. We praise you with the fruit of our lips. Now, Lord, forgive us for any unrighteousness, God, that would interfere with our worship to you, Lord God. And with gratitude, we said thank you for blessing us. Thank you, God, for the hope that we have in you, Lord. We ask your blessings upon this service, Lord God, and everything that we say, everything that we do, that it be pleasing in your eyesight, that it would bring a sweet smell to your nostril and not a stench. So, Father God, make us worthy, God. Make us worthy, God, to lift our hands. Make us worthy, God, to sing your praise. Make us worthy, God, to call upon your great name. Make us worthy to declare the truth. Make us worthy, O oh Father God, as we come, God, into your presence. Enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise, Lord God. Be pleased on today, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We worship you, Lord God, in the beauty of holiness, God. For there is absolutely none like you in all the earth we can search the world over and we will never find anyone anywhere that compares to you lord god so we worship you lord god we adore you on today father god we give your glory in Jesus' name god be pleased oh god amen
excellent he is. Do we have any ministers who have joined us today? Any ministers in the congregation? Yes, ma'am, you're welcome to join us in the pulpit area. Reverend John. Amen. second Saturday in May, 9 o'clock, Sister Tillman, is that correct? 9 a.m.? The second Saturday in May, 9 a.m., um, the women ministry, the males, the men ministry, girls ministry, whatever you want to call it, and the health ministry team have come together, put together a program that will address some issues and concerns that have been brought to our attention. We will have chaplain here to address living wills, medical power of attorney. We have someone here to speak on insurance and um, mental health and things of that nature. This is a family friendly function. Okay, we have some things prepared for our children as well. Our young children can come. Sister, uh, Sister Nickelberry will be teaching on church etiquette uh, for our youth, for our youth. And then Sister Pat Dietrich has arts and crafts for our smaller kids and things prepared. So we have something prepared for everyone. I know it's Mother's Day weekend, but there's no better time than to make the right preparations for our children and those that are going to be left behind when we leave. So we're asking all interested members, please come, please invite someone. We will even to put a registration list out there just so that we can have a count and properly prepare to minister to you in that way, okay? Please get them yourselves. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 This is Women's Day. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. 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 I know many of you all have been uh, participating. All of our women have been participating in the, uh, the events. Uh, 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 the, you were a part of the um, retreat on yesterday. Amen. Amen. I got it. To, yes. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. I got a chance to watch it online, and I was just so enlightened and delighted at how the Spirit was moving in the place, and uh, and how God just is uh, just is letting His His Word come forth. Amen. And so I am excited. Amen. About how uh, the Lord is going to move on today. Amen. And we are glad to have Chaplain Mary Wesley with us to Amen. share with us the word of God. Amen. 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 And so we're going to uh, move to the side quickly because I want this spirit to just keep on moving. Let's just keep on praying for those who are uh, going through. We have had some families that have had uh, loss, uh, families in bereavement. So we want to continue to pray for the Higgs family, uh, the White Farrell family, uh, Sister Hicks family, 
Uh, the moral service is planned for the 27th. The wife, Cyril, family, uh, the service is pending for uh, is pen is pending for the 26th, and so we'll give you more information on that. And also the Harris family, uh, that service is scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, so just keep on praying for them, along with our sick and shut-in. Our list is quite lengthy, but we know God is able. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we're going to go forward in the Lord. Amen. And just have a wonderful time of worship. Amen. Submitting to our holy God. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Amen. 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 Women submitting to the holy God. Amen. We all need to submit. Amen. To the holy God. Amen. God bless you guys.
believe in me. I know he is. God is keeping me. Woke me up this morning. Clothed in my right mind. God is keeping me. God is keeping me. God is keeping me. He's keeping my mind. He's keeping my children. He's keeping my home. He's keeping my heart. And he kept me from all harm. Keep you in perfect peace. All you gotta do is keep your mind. Keep your mind stayed on him. God is keeping me. Hey, God is keeping me. You ought to be a witness. God is keeping me. Oh, he blessed me. He blessed me and he, and he kept me from all. of keeping us. We can't even keep ourselves. Only God can keep us and keep us from everything that's harmful to us. Hallelujah. Yes, sir.
she did all these things. And she cared for me and made sure everything was right. She gathered me up. I had to go to the restroom with all them clothes on. I said, oh, Lord, how are we going to do this? She took me. She just did what a mother would do. Those are my favorite memories of my moms. So today, we remember. I remember the women of Galilee. And I know for some, Sister Bush's family and Sister Dangerfield, the wounds are fresh but there are still good moments. And every woman in this church has a good story that they could tell. And we can't all tell our stories today, but we can all remember, right? I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember all those times with the Betty Whites and the Roselle Wars and the Edna Howards. I remember. I remember the Sister Franklins and I remember all of those, I, I, remember. I remember, I remember, and you remember, wherever you are, there's a special woman in your life. So now I'm going to ask the men to stand first, and I want you to say, I remember. All the men in this church, if you had a good mother, good sister, a good aunt, bake some good cakes for you, I remember, I remember. Now all the women in this church to stand. You got some good sisters. You had some good mothers. You had some good aunts, some good cousins. I remember. I remember. I remember. Now all the children who we're standing on the shoulders of all of those that have gone on to help make Galilee Missionary Baptist Church what it is today. I remember. I remember. You remember. And we pause to say thank you to God. For every woman that came through this door, for every woman that made a better way for me, taught me the Bible, Sister Edna Howard, Sister uh, Lee. I remember my first Sunday school teacher. I remember. Do you remember your first Sunday school teacher? I remember. I remember our Bible study. I remember our Bible drills. I remember BTU. I remember y'all. Do you remember? I remember the speeches that they gave us. Sister Boy made me learn long, long speeches. I remember. It made me a better preacher, Reverend, because I know I got to do some studying on God's program. I remember, ladies. Do y'all remember? I remember. Oh, God, we thank you today for the women that have come through these doors. We thank you for the lives that they have touched. Oh, God, we thank you for how they made us better women, better men better children. Lord, and we lift our voices to heaven today with a hallelujah and a thank you, Jesus, in our heart because I remember. And let the church say As we prepare our hearts for altar call, it's going to be led by our own sister Kimberly Edwards. As she's making her way down, we do have those who are standing in need of prayer. Along with our noted prayer list and our bulletin, we would like to add also Lois Coleman, which is Brother Bates' grandmother. She's, in, she's on hospice. Brother Bates' grandmother. Also, Brother Cordell Homer is the father of our own sister, Sheila Bates. And I would also like to add, if you note in your program, and you might be a little curious as to why you don't see the face of our printed speaker for today, which is uh, Elder Rosalind Wynn. She was down to do our word, bring our word of encouragement for today, but she took sick on Friday. She came down with the flu, and she couldn't make it. And in her replacement, God said Chaplain Wesley would be here. So we want to add our sister, Elder Rosalind Wynn, to our prayer list, along with our Pastor Emeritus and Sister Davis, Sister Griffin, and all those who are just standing in the need of prayer. The list is just absolutely too long. So I'm asking if you stand to your feet, you come down by faith. And if there's anybody on your heart that you want, God to remember on today. 
you could just whisper their names or just call their names out in a loud in a way that because God has he's no short of hearing it and he knows what we're going through about his most gracious and holy heavenly father lord we come just to say thank you lord we have so many things to be thankful lord for you have blessed us with so much lord and we just stop just to say thank you lord we don't want to be an ungrateful people lord we don't want to be an unappreciative people lord so we just stop just to say thank you Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you blessed us with, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, clothing our right mind, Father God. Lord, I had some problems with this knee this morning, Lord, but I thank you, Lord, that I got the activity of my limbs, Lord, and you allowed me to come in this house to praise your holy and righteous name, Lord. Lord, I just say thank you. Lord, I thank you, Lord, because you have brought us together on this Women's Day, Father God, so we as women can worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. We thank you for the men of the house, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we have a covering with the men, Lord, that they look after us, Father God, and we thank you for the godly men in this church, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for our church as a whole, Father God. We ask you, Lord, to bless us collectively, Lord. Let us be who you have called us to be as a church, Lord. Let us go out individually, Lord, and do what you have called us to do, Father God, because we are in this business to spread your word, Father God, because your word told us to go out, to go ye therefore and teach, Father God. So we ask you, Lord, that you would just bless our efforts, Father God. Help us to give, give out the word the way it's supposed to go, to be, Lord. Help us to... Help us to be the child that you have called us to be, Lord. Help us to live the life that you called us to live, Lord. Because even if we don't speak to anybody, if anybody see us, Lord, that they can see the God in us, and Lord, and magnify you with y'all in heaven, Lord. I just thank you right now, Father God. I ask you, Lord, to forgive us for all our sins and all our transgressions, Lord. Because there are some times we weren't right, Lord. There are some times we didn't think right. There are some times things that we thought we're wrong, so we just stop to ask you, Lord, to forgive us. Because you said in your word, if we ask, you will forgive, Lord. You're going to throw them in a the sea of righteousness. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, we ask you to help us forgive ourselves, Father God. One of the hardest things that we can do is forgive ourselves, Lord. But we ask you, Lord, to help us to forgive ourselves for the things that we know are wrong, Father God. Because we've asked you, and you've already given it to the sea, Lord. And I just want to say thank you, God. Lord, I pray for all that are on our sick and shut-in list, Father God. I pray for those who are bereaved, Father God. We have some, some uh, eulogies that are coming up, Lord, and we just ask you to be with these families, Lord. Help us to do what we need to do to comfort them, Lord, because that's what you told us in your word, to comfort ye one another, Father God. And we ask you, Lord, that you would just help us comfort those that are in need, Father God. Lord, we pray for our speaker right now. We pray for the one who's not here, Lord. We ask you to heal her body, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for all our sick and shut in, Father God. We ask you to give us what we stand in need of. Lord, but we are all in need of something. So, Lord, we ask you that you just give us all what we stand in need of. Lord, I just thank you. I just thank you, Lord. We ask a special blessing on our speaker of the hour, Father God. We ask you that you would give her something to pass on to us, Father God, to help our walk just a little bit better, Father God, to help us learn something from you. Lord, we ask you, we, we, we just, I just thank you, God. I, I just thank you. I just don't know what else to say, Lord, but thank you, Father God. Lord, I pray for all that do that binds us to pray for the sick, the shut in, the bereaving, those who do not know you in the pardon of our sins, Father God. Lord, keep us together as a church, Father God. Lord, I pray for those who are just hurting, Father God. Lord, but we love you. We know that we talked about faith in Sunday school, Father God. So we ask you, Lord, to give us the measure of faith that we can grow. And for those that have mature first, Lord, help us to help those that faith is not as, is not as expand 
as those that have greater faith, Father God. We just help us, Lord. Help us, bring us together, Father God. Keep us together, Father. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Let all that believe say amen.
right, I am here to introduce our speaker, Reverend Elder Mary V. Wesley. Mary Virginia Wesley was born and raised in Birmingham, Alabama. She has now graciously made Dallas her home. Her education extended from Alabama to Texas, where she finished her Bachelor of Finance degree at the Dallas Baptist University. She also studied at the School of Rama for ministry. She now holds the title of elder at her church, the Potter's House of Dallas. For 11 years, she held the position of chaplain at the Dallas Sheriff's Department. Reverend Wesley has founded a ministry Mary Wesley Ministries Incorporated. By the grace of God, this ministry extends internationally to Africa. She is the vice president of A Break for Grandmothers, an initiative to give grandmothers who are raising their grandchildren a chance to be pampered and appreciated. Amen. Reverend Wesley is an active prayer warrior for several organizations. Her passion is helping the homeless and those who are in dire need of the gospel. Amen. She loves the Lord and is always looking forward to opportunities to be of service for her Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. So today, I introduce to some and present to others, Elder Reverend Mary Virginia Wesley. After the choir renders the next selection, she will be our speaker of the hour. And your heart is filled with despair. Remember God cares. And when you in doubt and you can't see your way up, he'll see you through. Yes, he will.
stayed on Jesus. Oh, Lord. Mm. Oh, bless his holy name this morning. Oh, help me, Lord. Ooh. He 
y'all are standing. All glory. I've been introduced. And now I would like to ask you to please sit down. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I do give honor to the Lord God Almighty, to the Savior of my soul, to the lifter up of my head. Ah, to the Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to bless the Lord for Pastor Keith Hall and First Lady Ursula Hall. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God, I thank God for allowing them to come across my path and for me to come across their pathway. And this Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, oh, my Father. Truly, you all are a church that, that, that just engulfs, just takes your arm and just puts them around anyone, anyone that will come in your presence. I do pray that you're like this everywhere you go. I pray that this love and this fellowship and being kind to others is how you live your life every day. When you go into your workplaces, wherever you may go, I pray that the, this spirit that's on this pastor and his wife is on you. And I cannot say enough about Irenita. Oh my gosh. I'm on first terms basis with her. Because of her cousin back there. Oh my gosh, I love myself some Sergeant Lieutenant Boyd. <laughs> Fonda Boyd. Oh, I tell you, it's nothing like your roots. And this morning, you all, I thought I was going to lose it with all of these songs. This praise and this worship, if I tell you this is not like my home at home and what I remember, what I remember from my Baptist raising, hallelujah, I was raised up in a Baptist church. The word of God was put in me in the Sunday school at a Baptist church. So I absolutely love my roots. And I can never leave them. Amen. Never leave them. Uh, today, I have with me my husband, who is my covering. He really, really, really covers me. Now, if you want him to um, speak, just do something to me. Otherwise, he's quiet as he can be, but he, his presence is known. So I want to thank you for being here. Would you please stand up? Let them see who you are. <laughs> and that is my husband of 50 years. Do you hear me? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Ah, glory to God. Thank you. You all can hear me very well. Amen. I want to be able to hear myself. The pastor asked me, do it, did I want the mic, the whole, or this one? I think I'll, I'm taking this one because I'm animated. <laughs> I'm like any cartoon, I'm telling you. Oh, my gosh. So, Lord, help me be still up here. <laughs> well, you know, I have to first tell you this. The scripture says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God created in righteousness and true holiness. 
after which God created. You didn't do your own. He did it in his righteousness and holiness because we were made all of that through him. But before I get there, I would like to tell you uh, about something that um, happened to me to let you know that God is a holy God and that we can submit to him because that's your thing, women submitting to our holy God. You really can submit to him. On Friday, I had plans. Mm -hmm. I, did you hear me? I said I had plans. And so I wanted to go to the country to look at some little piglets because I'm going to get some pigs. <laughs> Amen. And we're going to grow them up. Amen. And we're going to take them and have them processed Amen. so that we can have some food to eat. <laughs> because I don't know what they're doing to the food now. I already have my cows. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm ready. So, you know, I mean, I had my heart set on that. I was going to have fun, enjoy myself. But uh, didn't have. I was disappointed, and I just felt like, why didn't I get to go? And you know how your mind see all of this is in the sermon. Y'all better know I'm doing the sermon right now, oh. <laughs> right now. And so, I I was uh, disappointed, and in my mind. I was thinking some things. And, you know, when you think, if you think on something long enough, like being disappointed, you know, the person knew I wanted to go, and, and I've given my word, and I've been excited. I'm ready to go. But things change, just like for you. Uh, so, I want you to know how much God loves you. So, instead of me really getting upset, I'm talking about because my mind was going there. I, I came up with this scripture that's in my spirit already that would help me make it through this. You know, I know you may think that's nothing, but you know, we have to know that we are submitted to God every minute, every moment of every day. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. There should be a word in you when the enemy comes and tries to make you think things in your mind that really doesn't matter. It really is not that important, but this is what happens. So, I, I uh, got the scripture in Ephesians that said for me to think on what I'm supposed to be thinking on. And he says for me to think on what finally, wait now, because you know I had to get there. So finally, brethren, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are just, pure, lovely, honest, true, a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So that scripture came up, came in me, and then I began to say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I said, Father, I trust you. I trust you with my life. Wherever you want me to go, 
and whatever you want me to do, that is what I will do. So I thank you. And you know why God gave me that peace? Why he didn't let me get upset? That was on Friday. You called me when? <laughs> Listen, had I not been in a place where God is already in control of my life, I wouldn't have been able to do that. He wouldn't have been able to use me. So at any time, y'all, no matter how little or minute you think it is, the enemy will start with that kind of thing in your mind. And you cannot allow the enemy to have no place. No place. And then there's another example. My sister got sick. She had a massive stroke with and bleeding at the brain. And I've had to fly to Birmingham. I went immediately, because I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. And I went immediately. And God told me what to do. But I'm an intercessor. So I pray prayers for the bereaved. Everything I prayed for them happened to me. Everything from the family acting up, you know, because I pray that families will be on one accord. They will be in unity, that they will get along, that there will be enough money to take care of the finances of, of burying a person, their loved one. And that there would be people around who would be there to show them love. I had to live that. And to lose a loved one, and I'm in the bereavement ministry at my church. So I know the pain. I've seen it on people. And it's been a long time since anyone passed away in my family. And my sister, she did die. Oh, uh, but I remember. But my sister did die, and it was a lot of pain with her children. And they just postponed everything. They kept trying to wanting her to live. You all get it, get it written down how you want to be cared for. <coughs> because Amen. it'll bring so much pain on the family. When you don't know what to do if someone goes on life support, you need to have it written down. And the way people are going now and things are going so fast, we don't have time to play around. We need to get things in order. Amen. In order. All of this comes from being submissive to God. Amen. You say, well, how, how does that, how is that being submissive? Because we have to first know that God is in control of your life. Yes. And everything that happens to you is not by happenstance. Yes. God has already written it down about you how it should be, what should happen. So you've got to trust him for that. You've got to trust that he knows what's best for you. You cannot go on your own. So here Paul is speaking to the church at Ephesus. And these are wealthy people. They, it's a wealthy city. And they have plenty. And they have just come into the knowledge of who Jesus is. <coughs> and so that's where we are. We're in the knowledge of who Jesus is. We know who he is. Mm -hmm. But yet, he told them to renew their minds. Mm -hmm. Because they could not live in the state of their old man. So they had to put on the new man. Yeah. 
it says put him on. So it doesn't mean it's just going to happen. You got to work at it. How, how many of you know that uh, this morning when you got dressed, you had to put on your own clothes? Yeah. Yeah. No one could put them on for you. You put on your own clothes. You were able to do it. And so we have to put on this new man. And so he was reminding them as a Christian how you should live. You may not get jumped and shouted today, <coughs> but you will have the mind to think on things. You're going to think about how you carry your life on a daily basis because that's what Christian life is about. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to have a renewed spirit right. in our minds. We cannot allow the enemy to use us. Because he comes after your mind. Because you serve the Lord with your mind. That's how we serve him. And so we cannot be, the Bible says, for us to be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So our minds must be in a position where God is honored at all times. Yeah. Mm. And do you realize that you are to keep your mind stayed on God? Yeah. It, I, I mean, you have to keep your mind stayed on God, whether people like it or not. Because yeah. you know sometimes when you talk to people and all you can talk about is the Lord. Now you may tell them, you know, you can do this natural thing, but in a minute, God is going to show up. Because he's in everything in your life. So don't let anyone make you feel bad because you talk about God. Oh, he is our savior. And we cannot be ashamed of him no matter where we go, what we're doing, uh, or, or any of that. He's God. And he wants us to recognize that. So he is a holy God. And what we think on can either enhance our walk with God. Mm. It either enhance our walk or what? It can hinder yeah. our That's walk. Right. That's right. So we don't want to uh, be hindered by our walk with Christ. Yeah. We need to go as he has said that we should go. Yeah. Walk. So in other words, you're not going to have <coughs> toxic thoughts. Mm. Mm. Toxic. Do you know that's poisonous? Yeah. Do you know that's something that can kill you? Yeah. That you can die? Such as fear, worry, stress, and unforgiveness can cause your brain, it can cause damage to your brain. See, because you are releasing something that's not natural. Yeah. Did you know that none of those things I mentioned are natural? Mm. They're not supposed to be in us. There are emotions and feelings, but they can paralyze you and keep you from being where God wants you to be. Yeah. So in a spiritual sense, those toxic thoughts uh, connect you to the curse that Jesus already delivered you from. All right, all right. But when you guard your mind and your thoughts and keep yourself in an attitude of faith, yeah. praise, thanksgiving, and truth, yeah. you come over to healing, Amen. deliverance, and victory. Amen. I just want to tell you that without a humble heart mm, yeah. that is submissive to Christ yeah. and without your soul and your mind acknowledging his lordship, mm. see, he's our Lord. Yeah. He is our Lord. Yeah. And in our lives, we have to listen to him. This is how you submit. 
You have to know that he, he is your Lord. Yes. You have to listen to him. How many of you really listen to God? This is just something for you to think about. I'm not going to preach to you. It's for you to think about. How many of you really listen to God? Do you have a listening ear? Do you know how to listen? Do you know when God is speaking to you? That's something you have to know. And the only way you can know that is that you have a relationship with him. It's no way. It's no other way. And, you know, we come to church. We sing. We pray. We worship. We fellowship with others. But do we really hear from God? If the Lord said in your spirit that you should uh, give a certain amount of money, are your ears open to that so you can hear? When we don't obey God, we can miss the blessings that he has for us. Because really, we bless ourselves by obeying God. That's the only way you can do it. So obeying him. That is, to do what he tells you to do. Yes. Woo. How many of you, if your children did not obey you, that, that, that you would be happy? Because you, you want them to obey you. Why? Because you know what's best for them. And not only that, you know what will happen if they don't obey you, they're going to obey the law. They're going to obey somebody. So you want them to start at home obeying you. So when your children obey you, what will you withhold from them? You will do anything for them. We have eight grandchildren, and one's birthday is in May, and she's saying she wants cowboy boots. You know, she knows that she can tell her grandparents that she wants cowboy boots. Because we've told them that we're their grandparents. But I guarantee you they know, too, that grandmother and grandfather, you're not going to play with them. That one that asked for those cowboy boots, when she was about three, she said, I said, you know, I was talking to you talking to someone, and I said, you know, and I just, I couldn't believe they didn't think I prayed about this. My little granddaughter said, anyone that knows you know you pray. (laughs) Anybody know you pray. So now you know with comments like that, what you going to withhold from them? Oh, you're going to give them what they want and what they ask for? You're going to give it to them. (laughs) So it's nothing like Obeying, having children that obey. And so God wants us to obey just like that. Isn't that wonderful? And he doesn't just beat you over the head or anything like that. Just just obey me. And that's the only way I am going to know that you love me is that you obey me. And the only way the world will know that you are my disciple is that you love one another. Obedience and love, they go together, you know. Because you're not going to obey anyone you don't love Mm. in your whole household. You're not going to do that. So, and then you need to follow him. Mm. Mm. You think because we come to church, we're following God? Just because we come to church. Do you know how many people come to church out of tradition? They just come. Well, that's where my mother and father went. That's how I grew up. I'm going to be in church on Sunday. I was at the club last night, but it's Sunday and I'm going to church. Oh, and, 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 and you know, 
me and my boyfriend, we live together, but he know I'm going to church. Oh, you're going to go to church because it is your tradition. It's what you grew up doing. Ah, uh, but did you learn anything? Did you really follow? Are you really following Christ? Did you get anything down on the inside of you so that when that man asked, uh, let's live together, you said, oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, my son had a little girlfriend. They'd been girlfriend and boyfriends a long time. Sure, he was going to marry her. So when he finished uh, college, she finished college, she got herself an apartment. I called her up. I said, you know, uh, he will not be living with you. She said, oh, no, ma'am. Oh, no, ma'am. No. He, uh, I don't care how old you are. You're not living with anyone until you are married. You, you want to be a man? You want to be a woman? Uh, really, women being submissive, you got to learn how to submit to God first. So say no, because you got to submit to God first. And when you can be submissive to him, you can be submissive to your husband. Do you know 50 years of marriage was not because my husband was always right and I was always right. It was because of how we submitted to God. Uh, that old school stuff. My husband say some things just old school. We old school. Oh, no. I'm God school. I'm God school. Do you hear me? Do not think that we are together because of old school. How they used to do it. Ah, uh, I don't even know how they used to do it. All I know is how God wants me to do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to do what God says so that we can stay married 50 more years. <laughs> Woo. I used to think, you know, I thought, well, this year since we turned 50 years, you know, that that was great. We went out to dinner, and these people have been married 56 years. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, and when I go to Africa, they love it. You know, they start saying, this is, e this is evangelist uh, Mary Wesley from the United States. She has been married to one man. <laughs> one man. <laughs> I love to say, I've been married to one man. And until death do us part, one man. Hallelujah. And so God wants us to say, one man. That lady uh, yesterday that was speaking, she said, nobody can tell her about her man. Because she know her man. So do we know our man? Because he can't, he's going to come back for a bride. And that bride is going to be us. Yes. And it has no gender. Yes. So we're all going to be with him. And he wants us to be ready, right. ready to go. Yes. Hallelujah. As his bride. Yes. Oh, adorned and ready. Yes. Oh, to go into the marriage supper. Yes. We're going to be ready. Yes. So God wants us to be like that. He wants us to be like that right now. Right. Because he knows all the good things that he has planned for us. He's got good things planned for us. Oh, and I want to be there. I want to follow him all the way. And then, you know, you want to know that the sheep, she said we were sheep. We're sheep. And sheep is a dumb animal. They don't know what to do unless the master tells them. Are you going to be like that? You don't know what to do with your life? Until the master speaks, hallelujah, he's your father. He's your man. Oh, and you should know his voice. You should know when he's talking. When my husband walks, I know them boots are coming. I know it's him. I don't even have to look. Hallelujah. That's how God wants us to follow him. Closely. Closely. And you know when that shepherd gets ready? For those sheep to follow him, 
all he does is just rises up and calls them, and they come running. They come running, all of them know exactly who their master is. We got to know our master. And if you know him, you're going to live for him. You're going to obey him. You're going to do what he asks you to do. It's something in obedience. It, it brings about so many other characteristics that are so important. Oh, so when God knows everything, you have to give up you. Oh, my father. Give up you. Give up you. That means what you hoped for, what you dreamed for, what you desired. You have to give that up and put it under submission to God, to the holy God. Oh, I tell you, he's the sovereign Lord, and he can do anything he wants to do, however he wants to do it, people, however. Oh, and when you're submitted to him like that. When you say, God, do you know when you raise your hand, you're saying, here I am, Lord. I belong to you. My life is in your hand. And I'm, 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 I'm yielded to you, Father. Whatever you want, do you all do this at home? I practice this at home, Lord. Lord, I belong to you. I tell you, it'll keep you. Yes. 71 years, it'll keep you. Yes. And I tell you, God is good. Yes. And you can tell when people are submitted to God. Yes. You can tell it. They walk around in it. People wonder, oh my God, you walk around in it, yes. in your submission. Yes. It's all over you. Because if you were submitting to any of those Wicked thoughts, <laughs> wicked deeds, <laughs> all of that talking back and getting people told. Because now you know the flesh likes that. Yeah. Oh, oh, the flesh likes it. Oh, they, oh, the flesh loves it. You, you said what to me? Oh, you ready to tell them off. And you know, but my husband taught me, you do not talk crazy to people who have something you want. If, if they've got something you want, you don't talk crazy to them. You get under the submission of the Lord. Speak to them in a cool, calm, quiet voice. Never raise your voice, but just get your point over. Uh -huh. And then that's when the Lord can move. You know, he can't move in a lot of anger and stuff like that. The Lord says he's not there. Yes. Contention and strife, God is not there. Yes. And he's not going to help you in it. Do you hear me? Yes. He's not going to help you in it. All right. All right. Because you've already run him off. And, 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 and you know, you have your angels. Your angels are waiting for you to give them a command. Yes. To tell them what to do. But you can't give them a command of what to do if you don't know the word. Because that's all they're going to move on. Right. They're just going to move on your word. So you have to always know that your angels are there. Yes. So you just resist. You know, when you submit, you have to be humble. Yes. So then you have to resist the devil. Yes. The Bible says, humble yourself. Nobody's not going to humble you. You do it for yourself. You humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. He can't stay there. He, he has to go. He can't. He, uh, did you, in Africa, uh, they say, they drive like this. Cars, you, you be so scared you don't know what to do because you've never seen people drive like that. But they never hit each other. They have all the modes of transportation. And so I was with Pastor Godfrey, and I said, 
and we were going to the bank, and uh, he got in front of me, and he was across the street. I said, Pastor Godfrey. He turned around and looked at me. I said, how am I going to get across the street? He said, they can't hit you. <laughs> they can't. They can't hit you. I said, they can't hit me? He said, no. I, got a, I went across that street, and they can't hit me. You see, I'm here. So they can't. Can't. They can't. The devil has to flee. He can't mess with you. But you got to resist him. You got to be strong enough to resist him. You've got to have the word in you. Do you know when things are going on in your life, the, the enemy comes and he should find God's word in you? So when that word is there, he can't stand up against the word because you know he only knows half of it. <laughs> Jesus told him, it is written. So we, you, he, can't, he can't do anything. He can't because he's not going to know all the word. He's just going to give you part of it. But you're going to have it all in you. Yeah. Yes, when, you when you let it flow up out of you like rivers of living water, that's what it has to do. Amen. So, and another way you can help, uh, you humble yourself. But then the next thing is you've got to cast down every high thing. Mm. Corinthians 10, 5 through 6 says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to obedience of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! And having in a readiness. Yeah. See, let's go on to the next verse. A readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fear. Uh, so I tell you, it's nothing like yielding to God. It's nothing like it. For he's holy. And he's righteous. And when you have a right mind to submit to God, this lets you know how much he likes you. A holy God that loved you so much that he sent his son, Jesus. He, he, he made a plan for us because Adam and Eve kind of got messed up and messed us all up. So he sent Jesus. And Jesus was willing to come and give his life for us so that we could live a life that would be pleasing to God and that would redeem us back to him. And the Holy Ghost was sent by Jesus so that it could enable us, he could enable us to live the life that Christ wants for us. Because you cannot live it on your own. And you're not doing anything yourself. A lot of us think we're doing it. We're not doing it. The Holy Spirit is at work in your life, and you have to acknowledge him too because that's the Holy Trinity. Anytime I want to get away, I said, I'm going for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and, and they'll be there when I get there, whenever I want to spend time with them. I know it's the Holy Trinity. So the Holy Spirit does his work in us. And we know that we were made the righteousness through Jesus Christ. He that knew no sin was made sin that we might be the righteousness of God. And when you pray, you should be thankful, thinking in your mind that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And every time you open your mouth to pray, he is praying for you. All that power, all that authority, he's speaking to the Father about you. So we should be happy to pray. 
glad we get an opportunity to pray to God. And then we have the Holy Spirit who helps us to pray because we don't know what to pray for as we ought to. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. We have power. We have the power to live this Christian life. As women, as men, we have the power to do it. I want to admonish you to always have a mindset of what you're watching on television, what you're hearing in the news, what you're saying on the phone. Because you know, the Lord, <laughs> if the Bible says this, I know I'm gonna preach. The Bible says this, that if we judge and examine our own selves, if we do it first, then we do not have to be judged by anyone else. I, and that needs to be, a, you know, that needs to be a clap, sweetheart, because you know what? We don't want to judge ourselves. We want to say something about everyone else. But when you point that finger at someone else, the other one is pointing back at you. So God wants us to judge and examine ourselves. He's given you an opportunity to correct yourself first before he has to do it, before he points it out. You can't sit there all pious and think that you're, you're, you're right, that you're always doing everything right, uh, despite of what my husband said. Uh, you know, you cannot just always be the one. He, he said you have, someone has to be the bigger person. So I think that he tries to do that most of the time. But I try to do this word right here. I try to judge myself. Because you know I don't really want to. And something rises up in me. And I know it's not of God. I need to correct it. I first need to ask the Lord to forgive me. Father, help me. Please take this away. I don't want to be jealous. Ooh, one time I thought, you know, I just really not, never thought I was a jealous person. Because my mother, from a little girl, she used to teach me to never be jealous of other people. Really, it's envy. Never should be jealous or envious. But to have envy means that you want what someone else has. And you hate they have it because you want it. So I could not believe it. My mother always taught me to never do that because she said, you don't know where they got it from, how they got it, what they're doing to keep it. That's the part got me. I don't know what they're doing to keep it. So all my life, you know, I thought that I was that way until a friend of mine got something, and I said, oh, God, please don't let that. Please don't let me be envious of what she has. But I, 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 I felt it rising up. See, nothing is going to happen to you that you don't know. You can't say that you didn't know it. Because it's you, in you, your spirit, you know. So I had to ask the Lord to help me. I could not allow that thing to grow. Oh, no, because mm -mm, I'm a blessed woman. And I have everything I need. Everything I need. So the Lord is good. So we, we, we're not going to have that. So we're going to judge ourselves. And then I want to tell you this from 2 Timothy 1 and 9. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Amen. Not according to our work, uh -uh, uh -uh. but according to his own purpose and grace, yes. which was given to us in Christ. God saved us and called us to live a holy life. 
And let me show you this. I'm just going to say this, and then I'm going to sit down. I, I just want to ask you if you will just bear with me as I let you know this. <coughs> So now you get a chance to read. I want you to stand up and we're and I'm going to read it. Hallelujah. Verses eight verse chapter eight of Romans verses thirty eight through thirty nine. me know when you are there. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I hope I have it all right. Thir Romans 8, 38 through 39. And now I'm And here we go. Ooh, this scripture right here, you all, it blesses me so until I can hardly contain myself. It says, for I am persuaded Woo! that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Neither height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And I want you to go away with that, that nothing you can do. There's nothing, nothing, nowhere you can go. Yeah. Nothing that can happen to you in your life yeah. that God will not love you. Yeah. His love will bring you up out of it. Right. His love will keep you yeah. when times are troubled. Yeah. When we're going through, love will do that. Yeah. Love works. Yeah. God's love. And I want you to know that nothing can separate you from the love of God. So why not submit to a holy God who would not serve and submit yourself to a God like him? There's nothing missing in him. He's whole. He's perfect. He's full of majesty, dominion, and power. He's glorious. He's majestic. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the first. He's the last. He is God. He's the sovereign Lord. Nobody like him. Nobody can do you like him. And no one deserves the glory, the honor, and the praise. Nobody but God. And when you live a life that people can see, that nobody, nobody but God. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. And if there's anyone here that would like to give their life to Christ, you, you can, anyone, that has not made the Lord your Savior. If there's anyone
Chaplain Wesley said that she wasn't going to preach. But if I understand clearly what preaching means, it just simply means to proclaim the gospel of the truth. So if she proclaimed the truth, she preached. The style may have been a little indifferent, but she preached. God is pleased when the preacher preaches the word of God. So Chaplain Wesley, you preach. And we appreciate the truth because the Bible says that the word of God cannot go out and return unto him void, but it must accomplish everything that he set out for it to do. So the word of God went out today, women and men of God. It's upon us to take in the word seed so that it can permeate our hearts. She did not lie one time. Everything she said was the truth of God. And it's the Bible says that it's the truth that sets us free. So we take that word with us. And we allow that word to work on us and to pull out everything that's not like God. So she preached the word. So we appreciate that. Women submitting to the Holy God. And that's what we're all called to do. He made us, not we ourselves. So we have to become obedient to him. We want the blessings of God. We must submit ourselves unto him. That's what this whole weekend has been about. The retreat was about us obeying in faith, seeking the wisdom of God. So we got the word all weekend, and we just needed a different style. Now, Sister Sean, now she actually did the different style yesterday. So we got it both ways. So let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> to God be the glory. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, God. And my words. I think I'm supposed to give some words, right? <laughs> okay. So as the, as the uh, chair of the women's ministry, Sister Mark, we on it. Sister Mark, can someone get Sister Sample for me while I'm doing my presentation? <laughs> Sister Demetria Stamper, please. Uh, Chaplain Wesley, would you please come? We do appreciate you. We know that um, we had to call up on you because the plan that we had changed. In the Proverbs, the word says, many are the plans in a man's heart, but it's the purpose of God that will prevail. We planned for Elder Ross to be here. She took sick. God already knew that. I called up on you at the last minute, and you answered, and we truly appreciate that. So we, the women of Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, would like to present to you a token of love here and we have some beautiful flowers for you. For so accepting the invitation and submitting yourself at the last minute. It may have been the last minute to us, but it wasn't the last minute to God. That's why the Bible says if you hide the word in your heart, you'll always be ready to give an answer. So we thank you for that. We appreciate you, and we certainly, certainly love you. Thank you so much. Now, to the women of Galilee, I would like to thank you so very much. First of all, for even trusting me to take on this position as a leader. I've only been at this church, back at this church, as the pastor's wife since July 2023, not even a whole year. But 
Minister Moore prayed, I'm assuming, I know she did, and she saw something in me, and she asked me to take up on leadership, and I told her that I will pray about it, and I will let her know. And I was telling Pastor Hall this morning, I was kind of reluctant to take it, not because I didn't think I could do it, but it's just that I hadn't been here very long, and I wanted to kind of see how everything was functioning, because I didn't want to go against the grain too much. I wanted to follow up under the, the past leadership of Minister Moore and Sister Cheryl, but uh, Cheryl, rather. And so I just told her that, I said, well, I wasn't going to take, but I told him this morning, I said, I'm, I'm thankful that I did, because I know that it's not about us, and I'm a watcher, okay? I don't just jump out and to, to do anything, but I just try to watch to see what I see and to see what I hear from the Lord. So I'm so thankful that God gave me the opportunity to take on the assignment for 2425, be his will, that uh, this ministry that's already strong, this ministry that's already committed, this ministry that's already dedicated, it's not a hard job because I'm just falling into place and I'm just trying to hear God to see which direction do we go now because you were already on a path. This has been the easiest job. I've, it's, it's easier than doing hair. <laughs> Honestly. Because I've never met a group of women who were so dedicated, so committed, already just, before you can even call, I mean, they just already just, bing, just, on, just Johnny on the spot. And that makes my job easy. Amen. So now we just have to listen to what God wants us to do next. We're not starting at ground level, and, that's, and I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for that because it could have been, because I have a lot going on in my personal life. And, and if I had to start at ground level, I probably would have said no because I don't like to have do anything. So I'm just thankful for the opportunity to, to, to lead some skilled women, to lead, to lead some Titus three women, to lead Proverbs 31 women. So I'm just thankful for that. And for the retreat, would all the ladies of Galilee please stand? All our ladies of Galilee please stand. Finally, you have to stand. Yes. You all, I'm telling you, you all, we, you all, thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much for your fellowship. Thank you so much for how you just jumped right on in and just obeyed the Spirit of God, and I'm thankful for that. Give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Beautiful women, you look beautiful today. You were awesome on yesterday. You may be seated. Thank you for the volunteers that came through on yesterday. Thank you, uh, Sister Victoria Hudson. You gave a warm welcome to our, this place was full yesterday. It was awesome. And to God be the glory for that. We had probably over almost 70 guests for our retreat on yesterday. So just a guess. And the total might have, they may have been maybe 110 women here on yesterday. So to God bless you. To God be the glory for that. We're thankful, so thankful for that. Thank you for the presenters on yesterday. Sister Sharonica Carr was one of our presenters from the church. And Sister... Uh, Tavia Lawson. They did a phenomenal job on yesterday presenting the word of God. Thank you all so much for that. Thank you for the culinary ministry that served so on yesterday. Just graciously. Thank you for the ushers that came here took place. Thank you for Sister Sanders in her absence, Sister Hicks in their absence. Thank you so much for all that you've done on yesterday. Thank you today for Sister Sharon Peters who rendered our welcome. Thank you for the ladies who took up our offering. Thank you all so very much. Thank you to Sister Rosie Nixon for her job and her dedication in getting our folders yesterday. It was just so professional. Everything was just so beautiful. Thank you for the spirit of excellence, in which is the only way Ursula Hall is going to operate, okay? It has to be of excellence. So I thank you all for that. And thank you so much, Sister Finley. Thank you, Sister Wiley, who worked so close to me, her ideas, my ideas, and the vision that God gave us for the retreat and for today came into fruition. Thank you so much, Sister Wiley. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, ladies. Thank you, accountability groups. Give yourselves a hand. Let me commend you, accountability groups. I believe we have about nine groups now, and that's why we're, everybody's wearing the colors that represent the group. You all have, ladies of grace, this is, this is a lot of us. So, daughters of God, kingdom sisters, ladies of faith, phenomenal, what's up, what, what are y'all name? Ladies of destiny. We're just represented here on today. And let me tell you this, Sister Hicks gave a request, because she's not here, she wants all of us to take a group picture right after church, if that's okay, right after Pastor Hall dismiss us. We're going to take a group picture, and then she wants the uh, accountability groups to take a picture on the other side with the backdrop that we worked so hard getting up with our color, with our color coordinated groups. But uh, with that being said, I'm, I'm commending you accountability groups because you all are doing a wonderful job in your individual groups, how you are meeting to pray, how you are meeting to study the word of God, how you are checking on those members who can't be here, how you are holding one another accountable, and how you're doing your self-care, how we're just growing closer and closer together, how we're discovering gifts within us, giftings that's coming forth. So I thank God for that vision. I thank you all for moving and operating in that. And if you are not a part of an accountability group and you would like to become a part of one, we still are welcoming anyone in this church, even if you don't go to this church. If you know a woman or a lady who just need to be closer to God, who wants to grow in his grace, who don't mind praying and want to learn how to pray, learn how to study the Bible, we welcome you. Because see, we're here to strengthen one another. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. iron so that's what we're here to do. We're not getting in one another's business. We are just helping one another, and we can see the fruit. Give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. And last but not least, um, Sister Stamper, would you come forward? Thank you, Sheila Bates. She worked so hard as well to help us get everything together. But for Sister Demetria Stamper, I just want to give you a special thank. Because you worked so hard. You gave of yourself. You gave of your time and your finances. And you and I were on the phone speaking about the retreat on, may have been Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday. I was blowing up balloons trying to get everything done. And I heard a dog in the background. And I said, you know, I don't like dogs. Everybody knows I don't like dogs. I said, so you have a dog? She said, yeah, actually, it's, it's Fizzy Dog, but it's my dog, and it's an emotional dog. And when I heard that, I was reminded that I know you lost your husband, and I know how painful that has been for you and how you have been trying to navigate through life and in this ministry with the loss of Brother Stamper. So I wanted to give you these flowers personally from me because I want you to know that as you work through the pain, we see you. We are encouraged by your will to serve. I thank God that you give so much. You give it from your heart, even in your pain. And I just want you to be encouraged to keep on looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. The Bible says that God is close to the brokenhearted and to those who's crushed in spirit. And I know that there are seasons when you think about the loss and transition of your husband and it makes you so sad. But you still keep pushing with your granddaughters, with your son, and with this ministry. And I personally want to say thank you for holding me up with the retreat. Thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for these ribbons that you handmade for us. Thank you for the decor on yesterday. Thank you for all the gifts and the donations that you gave to these women on the, and the guests. On. Thank you. You are not unnoticed. So I'm just giving you these flowers while you can smell them. Giving you these flowers while you can see them. Just to encourage you, Demetra, and let you know that I love you. This church loves you. The women ministry appreciates you, and most of all, God sees you, and he loves you. Bless you.
get a touch tape. I don't know the size. <laughs> you know, before a neighbor became distant, he would expect us humble. And he'd always say, God got me. God got me. But then God told me, You just continue to stay. Yeah. And I said, but it's okay. He said, but you continue to serve. Because I have you here. And I just thank everybody. Show me that love and support. Okay, and that's my conclusion, my conclusive statement was to bless uh, Sister Stamper with a, a special gift and a special presentation because I know how she's in pain a lot of times, but she still pushes her way and she gives so yes. much. And we just appreciate that. We appreciate that. So again, thank you, Galilee. Thank you, Women's Ministry, for your fellowship, and I pray that you would pray for me as I um, do the will and the work of God and as I serve in this ministry, as long as he would have me serve, that he, I would remain healthy and creative and that I would always have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Davis, and thank you, Pastor Hall, for allowing us this time and how you supported us. Uh, in our endeavors, even on yesterday, how he helped uh, bring the materials down for us to decorate and how you're always just supportive. So we appreciate that and we appreciate everyone here that has helped us. And we, as we grow together and we trust God, I just thank you so much for the opportunity. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. What a wonderful time we have had. And the Lord, women, you've done a great, a phenomenal job. If you had allowed the Spirit of God to lead you, amen. It's been a wonderful weekend, amen. We praise God for the word that we heard this morning from Chaplain Wesley. Let's give her a hand of praise. Amen. Thank God for how she availed herself to the spirit. Amen. God bless you, women's ministry, uh, Minister Hall, Sister Wiley. Amen. All of the committees, all of the accountability groups, you're doing a great job, and we give God the praise uh, for what he is continuing to do in our women's ministry. Amen. 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 Let me make a few announcements. Uh, for next week or this coming week. Uh, brothers, don't forget, uh, we do have our brotherhood and rehearsal on this coming Saturday at 10. Amen. And also, we want to remember on the 27th, brothers, we're going to go and feed the hungry. Amen. Uh, it's so good to see our Pastor Emeritus Amen. here on this morning. Let's give Pastor David. Amen. Such a wonderful, wonderful hand of praise. Such a great spirit, a humble spirit. Amen. Let's continue to pray for him and Sister Davis. Amen. I understand that there are refreshments uh, in the fellowship hall. Amen. So all are welcome to go into the fellowship hall and get your refreshment. Amen. Our last words will be uh, by Minister Wesley, amen. We're going to have her come at this time. Let's give her a hand of praise. Well, let the church say amen. amen. 
Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right, baby. Amen. Amen. If the rocks, if the rocks cry out, we're going to be in trouble. So I never planned to let the rocks cry out for me. I'm a worshiper, and I love God. And so on this morning, afternoon now, um, I would just like to say that I give so much praise to this church. And you can do it because of your great leaders. Know that you have good leaders here. Pray for them. They need your prayers. Be faithful to what you've been called to do. That, that young woman that did the last, the last words, um, on, oh, my God, I saw her back there in the fellowship uh, working. She had the, the, the bucket that you push the mop in and everything. I said, you're going to give the word of God and be able to do a Hey, woo, you got some good ones. Oh, because people don't want to do that. I mean, can bring the word and do the mop. Woo, and that young woman back there, oh, my God. I thought I was going to have to run out of here when she was preaching. Oh, my father, you know I love good preaching. Really, I don't know why the Lord, he, he led me the way I went, but that's, that was the Holy Ghost. It wasn't me. So we just have to follow the Spirit of the Lord. We don't have to jump and shout, people. You need to think, use your mind sometimes. To think, to think about who you are and what you're doing. So now I'm, I'm here to dismiss. So let us stand, please. Uh-oh, the pastor got one more announcement. And you know what I love about this church? I think I'm going to have to come back and visit. Y'all have a song for everything. Yes, yes. <laughs> a song for everything. Yes, Woo! Don't forget, leaders, we will be meeting after church for training next Sunday. All right, don't forget that. That will be next Sunday. All right. All right. Oh, my husband's mother loved that song right there. Get right, church. She used to tell him to get right, church, and let's go home. And that's what the word was today, that you get it right, that you know what you're doing under the Holy Spirit. Holy God. So let us let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts always, Lord, be acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Oh, you're the lover of our souls, Father. I thank you for our being able to come into your presence today. Thank you for allowing us that privilege. Now, Unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to pre present us faultless before the Father. Let all dominion and power be in him. 
the same power that he had in Jesus, that is in you. So go out today and every day this week and proclaim Jesus, your Savior, your Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.